OFDM. OFDM stands for orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And um, basically, the idea is that instead of using a big frequency band, you divide into tiny bands. Instead of using a thick wire, use many little tiny wires. Okay. So, if you are given a 1 megahertz channel, instead of that, you use 10 100 kilohertz channel like this. Okay. And um, then um, the things will be much better using 10 channels than using one channel as it is. All right. And you can see the advantage right away. On a 10 megahertz, 1 megahertz channel, the bits would be very, very small because you are sending at a very high speed, you know, let's say 1 megabit per second. Each bit would be 1 microsecond. On a 10 kilohertz channel, if you do the same thing, same same modulation, everything else, you will get 100 kilobits per second and each bit would be 10 times bigger. Right? Even if the bits run into each other, you will still get most of the bit. Right? Whereas in this case, if the bits run into each other, you are lost. And if the bits move by 1 microsecond, you are totally lost. Over there with 10 microsecond bits, if you move if the bits move by 1 microsecond, they are not lost. So it is better to have very low speed, lot of them, lots of channels, right? So what you do is you take the band and divide into a small pieces and make sure that the power spectrum is such that each channel is running at its maximum. When it is running at its maximum, the other channels are running at its at their minimum. Right? So there is least interference. Of course, the channels will overflow and there will be some power from the other channels. But this is what the orthogonal part means. Orthogonal means you are perpendicular to each other. You don't affect each other. OFD. So each carrier now can be independently modulated with BPSK, QPSK, 16COM, whatever you want and differently. So each person, for example, if this class were different channels, each could run at its own speed. Somebody is sick means there is a lot of interference. They run slowly. Somebody is you know, in big speed, they can run fast. So now you have thousands of things which are running at their own speed. At the up and so this is used now everywhere ever it's ever since its discovery this is used on the wired networks as well as on the wireless networks it is used in um, um, dsl for example dsl is wired network that comes to your home it is used in all the wireless networks including lte vimax 82.11 and uh, it is easy to implement using fast fourier transform and inverse fast fourier transform Basically, now we can handle thousands of carriers using FFT chips. Okay, these are called signals, digital signal processing chips. DS. And so, advantages: it is easy to implement. The computation complexity is low uh, compared to the previous method, which was equalization. In the equalization, basically, you know, you wanted to make sure that all the parts of the spectrum were equally interfered with are equally amplified. Um, third thing is, is that graceful degradation is excessive delay. So suppose you decided that the bits would be, you know, 10 microsecond and therefore they can take one or two microsecond of shift. But um, if they shifted more than two, let's say they shifted three, this will not just sub, sub down to zero. It will go down slowly like this. Performance goes down gracefully. It's not just 0 to 1. Robust against frequency selective burst errors. Frequency selective. So at some particular frequency, let's say something comes up like shown here, still you know it not be in total 0 because there are other bits which are carrying being carried around. So frequency selective errors are burst errors. All of those frequencies will be gone, but you won't have any problem. Allows, allows adaptive modulation and coding of subcarriers. Now, you should know all of these words. I am just defining these words one by one. Adaptive modulation means that each frequency is modulated differently depending upon its own, uh, you know, interference and things like that. So, if there is more interference on this channel, on this, on this uh, frequency, it will be modulated at BPSK. This one could be modulated at QPSK. This could be modulated at Q, you know, QAM and so on and so forth. Right? Adaptive modulation. Robust against narrow band interference. 
which is actually saying the same thing as frequency select. Narrow band means, you know, a small band of uh, noise, there is some noise happening here. So I think this is probably um, repeat of that one. Allows pilot subcarriers. So you don't have to use, some of these frequencies can be used just for measurement. They don't have to be used for data. So you can figure out where there is a noise, where there is no noise. If there is a noise here, then the, these channels would be modulated differently. Of course, on the channel itself, you will find out because they will not pass the CRC. But even without that, you, know, you have physical layer measurements here, which tells you how much noise there is, and you can make a decision about you know, how to modulate these channels. All right. So you understand the advantage of OFDM. All right. So design. So large number of carriers, the larger you can have, the better you are off. But of course, it will cost you more because you will need a chip that can handle that many carriers. So large number of carriers, a smaller data rate per carrier and larger symbol duration. That's what it means. At 10 megabits, each bit is 0.1 microsecond. At 1 megabit, each bit is 1 microsecond. And at 1 tenth of a megabit, it is, you know, so on and so forth, 10 microseconds. So the smaller the rate, larger the bit in time. And therefore, if it moves in time because it becomes fatter or it, you know, comes from a different path, for any reason, it, it affects the big, thick bits are affected less than those tiny bits. Reduced subcarrier spacing means, in, so first thing is, less inter-symbol interference. That's important. Inter-symbol interference simply means that the bits run into each other. Remember that cartoon. The bits become bigger and bigger and bigger as they go through and they run into each other and they start affecting each other. So that is called inter-symbol interference. The second thing is inter-carrier interference. This is different. Inter-carrier difference interference is right here. If this carrier puts a lot of power in the red carrier puts a lot of power here in the center area, the black carrier will be affected. That is inter-carrier interference, right? And um, Due to Doppler spread, and how does the carrier move? As carriers can move in frequency. How can they move? Because of the Doppler, you are moving. So the carrier was actually here, but now it appears over here. Easily implemented as IFT, IFFT, and um, and FFT is computationally efficient way of computing DFT. You, you all know probably FFT. The style right now it is important to know is that FFT is Fourier transform, and Throughout this course, you don't have to take a Fourier transform, so don't worry about it. It's very complicated. You cannot do it manually. You really need computers, and uh, so that's okay. That's all we need to know right now is that there is a chip that can do it. Now, OFDM to OFDMA. DM, M stands for multiplexing or modulation. Um, and um, <laughs> multiplexing and then here it is A, M, A. M, A stands for multiple access. And these are different. So we will be using it like FDMA and FDM. TDMA and TDM. Okay. M, A stands for multiple access. So multiple users. Okay. So if multiple users want to use, OF, we can use FDM to allow multiple users. So what we do is we take a time dimension and the frequency dimension and we can put multiple users in different um, different time and frequency domains for example user one could get these many frequencies for this much time and then user two could get here user three could get all these frequency for all this time user four could get here user five could get there user six seven and so on and so forth so each user is given a particular time duration interval for which it can use particular set of frequencies. Now this is different than um, this one. Here we could just give all the frequencies, all the frequencies to one user. Okay. And then give all the frequencies to this one user and all the frequencies to third user. This will be what? TDMA, time region multiple access. If I give all the frequency, this frequency for the whole time to one user, that is FDMA. But OFDM is different because in OFDM, there are two things happening. First of all, these frequencies are orthogonal. That is why O is there. 
and then we have FDMA. Actually, actually, it's not really FDMA. This is actually both frequency and the 2D scheduling. So whenever now from now on, you will start seeing these 2D diagrams. Time, frequency. So whenever we give somebody, we tell them for how long, which frequencies you have. Okay. Previously, you used to have one-dimensional one diagram, either time or frequency on the x-axis. Now we'll have both x and y. All right, scalable OFDMA. So symbol, symbol duration depends upon the carrier spacing. So suppose you have carrier spacing of 100 kilohertz. That means each carrier is 100 kilohertz, basically, um, wide. I mean, so here, thing, another thing you have to remember the difference. So the carrier itself might have a frequency of 1 gigahertz. So everything, all the carriers are at 1 gigahertz, close to 1 gigahertz, right? But one is 1, one is 1.001, another is 1.002, 1.003 gigahertz because they are very closely spaced. So the carrier frequency is high, but the width is very small. You understand? So, so here the subcarrier, that is called the spacing between the subcarriers. So if they are very, very close, then the symbol is big. Why it is big? Like, like I explained to you, if you have 10 kilohertz spacing, then it will be, you know, 1 upon 10 kilohertz, kilobits wide, right? So symbol duration is function of the carrier spacing. Subcarrier spacing is equal to frequency bandwidth divided by the number of subcarriers. If somebody gave you this much band and you divide into 1000, that is the spacing. And so frequency bandwidth could be 1.2 megahertz, 3.5 megahertz, 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 20 megahertz. Depending upon the country, you may have that much spacing available to you. Okay, it is different in different countries. The total band. Now, symbol duration affects higher layer operations. So keep the symbol duration constant. So one method is that regardless of what frequency band you get, bandwidth you get, you just keep in every country the same duration, which is 102.9 microsecond. And that means the spacing is 10.94 kilohertz. You can just do one upon that and you get that. And then, and therefore, if you get 1.25, you have only four carriers. If you get twice as much, you get twice as many carriers. If you get four times as much, you get four times as many carriers. The intercarrier spacing is fixed. Yeah. I'm still not sure I understand how the symbol duration relates to the Symbol duration relates to subcarrier spacing. Okay, so basically, if you don't change anything, then the bit is proportional to the hertz. You get the same number of bits per hertz. Right? Mm -hmm. So, the carrier spacing tells you how many hertz you have. If the carrier spacing is 10 kilohertz, then all you have is 10 kilohertz. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, that translates to some number of bits. So, let's say you get one bit per hertz then that translates to 10 kilobits per second. And 10 kilobit per second means each bit is how long? 10 kilobits per second, 10,000 bits per second. Each bit is 1 upon 10,000 seconds, right? So that would be 100 microseconds. Now, if I change that spacing to twice as much, right? So, so like the different subcarriers will have Different, different data rate. Well, okay, hold on. Since they're all equally spaced, if you didn't, if you use the same modulation for all of them, they will have the same data rate. But you could use another dimension, which is different data rates, different modulation. Okay. That's an additional factor. Okay, that's an additional factor. You could have different data rates, and then they will have different sizes of the symbol. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you just assume that all of them are at their best or worst or whatever, then all of them will have the same bit duration. And that bit duration bigger is bigger. Oh, if the bits are longer, then they are less error prone. Now, can does everybody understand why they are less error prone? They, they spread. What happens is, remember the delay is spread. You send one bit, one pulse, it comes out as four pulses. Everything that you send so narrow, it becomes this big. Right? So you are sending, let's say, 100 microsecond pulse, by the time it gets here, it is 400 microsecond, right? Now, if your pulse itself is, now this is a really bad case. If your pulse itself is 100 microsecond and it became 102, let's take that example first, 100 became 102, then if the two pulses merge into each other, 
there's not a big deal. 98% is still available. Right? If one microsecond pulse became three microseconds, just two microseconds extra, three microseconds, you can't get anything out of it. Right? For the same delay spread, bigger is is that clear to everybody? If you have a question, you know, please ask. OFD. So, scalability simply means this thing. Scalable means you keep the carrier spacing same. And depending upon the width available, we change the number of carriers. That means it's scalable.